Just to be clear, the 24 G4 XE is the less mobile, but theoretically cheaper version of the 24 G4 X, an already cheap and frankly excellent gaming monitor. It's still the same panel in both, so if I miss anything here, you can find it in my review of the X, linked in the cards above, although I'll still give the, you a full sort of rundown of this XE while we're here. Really, the only physical difference is the stand and visa mount. The X has a normal height adjustable center mounted stand with height, tilt, swivel and rotation adjustments, whereas this XE just has a clip-in stand that only supports tilting. It still does have a visa mount, although it's hidden under a pretty nice cover that you'll need a screwdriver or ideally a plastic tool to pop out. Otherwise, this should be effectively the same monitor. So let's take a look and you'll see why I still recommend either of these rather highly. Specs wise, this is a 24 inch 1080p IPS panel that runs up to 180 hertz. They claim as a one millisecond gray to gray response time, but of course, we'll see about that. It also has both FreeSync and is G-Sync compatible. IO is just two HDMI ports and one display port, plus a few integrated speakers. Physically, this is AOC's latest design language. Muted, all gray, and pretty subtle. There are a few sort of angles and things that make it a, a little gamery, but on the whole, I, I'd say that it'd fit pretty well even in an office. The on-screen menu is controlled with downward facing separated buttons on the right hand side, which is definitely not my preference, although it does work well enough, and considering I doubt that you'll be in the menu too often, I don't think it's that big a deal. The menu itself is also AOC's newest design, and looks pretty nice, although I'm a little confused why they bury the overdrive settings, arguably at least for me anyway, the most important setting you should change on your monitor is on the second page of the gaming settings you have to scroll all the way down or wrap around for. I'd want that at the top, maybe second behind the picture mode at least. Either way, you do have four total overdrive options, including off, and we'll take a look at them in a second. You do also have both MPRT, which is there, or MBR, which is there, uh, backlight strobing mode, and MBR sync, which allows you to have that horrible backlight strobing mode enabled with free sync or adaptive sync enabled, which is kind of rare and kind of cool to see, even if I can't use it anyway. Now, to the eye, the panel is pretty nice actually. It's reasonably bright, it's decently vibrant and rich, and has a surprisingly good contrast ratio for an IPS panel. Those visuals are backed up by the data from the Spider X2, which reported just shy of the quoted 300 nits of peak brightness and a 1400 to 1 contrast ratio even at max brightness. That's pretty great for an IPS panel. Colors wise, it is equally impressive with 97% coverage of the DCI-P3 spectrum, which is frankly fantastic. And as for color accuracy, that came out to an average Delta E of just 1.05, which again is excellent, especially for a gaming monitor. And at least as far as I know, doesn't even come with a calibration certificate in the box like some of the higher end models do. So good job there. As for response times, with the default settings, meaning overdrive is off, I still don't know why that's the default, it should be set to medium, uh, we can see essentially the native panel performance and it isn't all that bad. It averages out to 7.2 milliseconds, which is beyond the 5.56 millisecond refresh rate window, but I've definitely seen worse. With overdrive set to the first step, called weak, we see the average drop to 6.25 milliseconds. That's still on the slow side, leaving a ghosted frame on screen at least most of the time, but it's definitely closer for sure. The next step, medium, is where I highly recommend you set this to. The average response time drops to below the refresh rate window at 4.5 milliseconds, and even more happily, that isn't accompanied by heinous overshoot. It's actually pretty mild, and exactly what I like to see in a, an overdrive sort of setting. This is, by far, the best mode, and this is 100% where you should stick it if you have a 24G4X or XE. But, for the sake of completeness, here is the top mode, strong. Strong is kind of an understatement, more like 
heinous. <laughs> the initial response time does drop to just 3.1 milliseconds, but if you include the overshoot time, you end up with worse than no overdrive on at all, at 7.6 milliseconds on average. Like, a lot of the time with moderately bad overshoot, it isn't too noticeable to the eye. But this? This was obvious. Try moving a window around, and it just looked horrible to look at. For some context, here is what the medium overdrive mode looks like at high speed. It isn't quite like OLED fast, but it finishes drawing the frame with a millisecond or so to spare, meaning there is very little motion blur and next to no ghosting on screen, plus little to no overshoot either. It's a great experience, 10 out of 10. Now, here it is on strong. It's a disaster. Pay special attention to the white uh, frog in the middle there. Look how like burned in it looks. You know, especially when it's moving. It's just, uh, even the black frog is visibly off. So yeah, please do not use the strong OD mode. It is awful. Use medium instead. If you're wondering about input lag, Happily, that is spot on, with OSRTT reporting right around half the refresh rate, which is exactly what you want to see. By the way, if you want to be able to, you know, test monitors like this yourself, or recommend something to your other favourite reviewers, I designed and built the open source response time tool myself, and I you know, sell the kits over at OSRTT.com, which of course is linked in the description if you're interested. Anyway, with that sort of overdrive on medium and you, you know, decent input lag, you get a pretty fantastic gaming experience. The 180Hz refresh rate combined with those decent response times means that motion is pretty smooth, very responsive, and decently sharp. 1080p at 24 inches isn't exactly IMAX quality, but it's plenty good enough to enjoy flicking around and clicking on some heads. The added mix of pretty, uh, a pretty vibrant panel makes it even better. It's just a great time, really. The one thing I should note, and I briefly mentioned it at the start, is the pricing. At MSRP, this fixed stand version is something like £20 cheaper. But both this and the height adjustable version are currently on sale at about £110, pretty much everywhere, including at the global Amazon link in the description. Which means that there's effectively no reason to buy this one over the sort of more featured essentially X model. However, I do appreciate that depending on where you are in the world and when you're watching this, there might still be a decent price difference between the X and XE versions. And so if there is, I can happily say that this XE is still an, uh, you know, an exceptional panel and frankly, stunning value. If the price difference is enough for you to not care about the adjustable stand, especially if you were going to vase them out to anyway, well, get the XE and save your cash. If there's no price difference though, well, then you may as well get the X. It's the same panel, but I mean, the recommendation stands either way. The 24G4, be it the X or XE, is a phenomenal value and well worth buying if you're after a 1080p high refresh rate monitor. Great job AOC. Now of course, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the X versus XE and the 24G4 in general? Let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, I will leave a link to this in the description if you are interested in it, and if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can also check out plenty of other videos, including the X review on the end cards. And like I said, if you want to be able to test monitors like this yourself or recommend something to some other reviewers, then feel free to uh, check out osrtt.com where I make my very own hardware available that I build right here at home. That's pretty much it for me. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the next video.